One, I will call the September 2nd Board of Commissioners meeting to order. <laughs> we are joined again today by our veteran Don Bradley to lead us in the pledge, and we are also joined by our esteemed Recorder of Deeds, Laura Shu, who will lead us in the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to you in prayer for our county. We thank you for our commissioners and officials. Give them wisdom and strength as our leaders. For our health care workers, keep them safe as they care for our sick. Bless and protect our police officers and military men and women. Take care of them as they protect us from the unrest in our nation. We lift up to you all those who need physical, mental, and spiritual healing caused by the COVID-19. Help those in charge to find relief from this pandemic. We lift the parents and teachers who are making the difficult decisions on how to keep their children safe as they go back to school. And we lift up those who have lost jobs and are struggling to make ends meet, bring new opportunities for hope. Help us all to respect and love one another to bring peace to America. Your word reminds us you are still in control and your love never fails. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay, next up um, on the agenda is um, National Recovery Month, and we are joined today um, by some esteemed guests. I want to recognize them. Um, today, Julie Pulo Hess is joining us. She is from Keep It Green Recovery Homes, and she is the president of the York Partnerships for Recovery. Mary Dahlheimer is here representing Not One More, and she is the secretary of the York Partnership for Recovery. We have Brittany Schultz here. She's from the York Opioid Collaborative, and she's also a member of the York Partnership for Recovery. Samantha Smith is here from the York City Bureau of Health. And last but certainly not least, um, Dr. Matt Howey is here. I think we all do know who Dr. Howey is, but just to remind everyone, he is the medical director for the City Bureau of Health. He's a public health strategist for the County of York, and he is a board member of the York Opioid Collaborative. So just a little bit about um, the York Partnership for Recovery. It's a, group, uh, it's a group of dedicated recovery advocates that plan and market events for National Recovery Month in York County. The mission is to educate, celebrate, support, and advocate for individuals in recovery. They work to spread the message of recovery and support in the York area, not only during the month of September, but all year round. This month marks National Recovery Month, national observance to educate Americans that substance use treatment and mental health services can enable those with mental health and substance use disorders to live a healthy and rewarding life. So we're here to celebrate that. Commissioner Hoke is gonna read a proclamation on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, and then uh, we'll have a presentation from the York Partnership for Recovery. I'm happy to be here to read this proclamation. <clears throat> National Recovery Month, September 2020. Whereas local recovery organizations promote National Reco Recovery Month to celebrate those who have overcome their addiction and to recognize those still working towards recovery. The focus of National Recovery Month is to celebrate the path of recovery and the journey of individuals to this end. Recovery is an essential part of behavioral health and one's overall wellness. The prevention and treatment of mental and or substance use disorders is effective and individuals do recover locally and throughout the nation. We must encourage relatives and friends of people with mental and or substance use disorders to implement preventive measures, recognize the signs of a problem, and guide those in need to appropriate treatment and recovery support services. To help more people achieve and sustain long-term recovery, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, the White House Office of National Drug Policy, the County of York and the York Partnership for Recovery invite all residents of York, Pennsylvania 
to participate in National Recovery Month. We must ensure opportunities for all these individuals to achieve and maintain success in their recovery efforts by promoting alternative activities and healthy lifestyles for those in our communities. Now, therefore, we, the York City Mayor and the York County Commissioners of Pennsylvania, do hereby proclaim September 2020 as National Recovery Month in York City and York County and encourage all citizens to observe and support National Recovery Month to help more people achieve and sustain long-term recovery. Given this day in York, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, on the second day of September, in the year of our Lord, 2020, and is sung by the City of York, the Mayor, and the three Board of Commissioners. Thank you. So, in partnership, the City of York Bureau of Health with the York Partnership for Recovery had decided to create a toolkit for to distribute. Um, some promotional materials included in this toolkit, uh, social media content, uh, website material, as well as a campaign flyer for a Facebook challenge, and we also included some sample photos that we used on our Facebook. This was assured to our different partners in the county. So the York City Bureau of Health put uh, the website content on their website page. So everyone can go there and download and we encourage everyone to share the materials. The flyer, you can go download or create your own if you're unable to print. And we encourage people in recovery to fill it out and take pictures and post it on Facebook. And then there's some pictures here. <clears throat> so we have three posts. The first two, um, I have some initial statistics on Gavin has assisted us with this since obviously due to COVID a lot of the in-person events weren't able to be held this month we decided that uh, Facebook and social media platform would be our best way to support um, individuals in recovery so these are two posts um, the third one went out on Monday but as of um, Monday morning before the third one went out we reached uh, 13,210 people. We had 2,313 um, impressions. Um, engagement was 2,786. We had 56 um, link clicks. And as of now, we've only spent around $200. So we're really excited just getting started. Obviously, the numbers will continue to grow as the month goes on. And we are using hashtag recovery for York. So we've already seen some individuals starting to post this and we're continuing to spread the word. And there's some other upcoming events that the York Partnership for Recovery is hosting. Okay. Hi, I'm Julie Pulo Hess with the York Partnership for Recovery and this is Mary Dahlheimer. Uh, so uh, the York Partnership for Recovery was formerly known as the York Recovery Committee. Uh, you may have heard of us. We've been together for 10, 11 years. And normally during the month of September, we put on the, the uh, first Friday reading of the proclamation out on the steps or down at Cherry Lane. And then at, at some Sunday in September, do a, a game at the Rev Stadium. And it's just three to 500 people in recovery, it, it's just a wonderful uh, time to get together. This year we're being creative and switching to all virtual. Uh, so on Friday, oh, I'll, I'll let you know who, who makes up the York Partnership for Recovery. It's my organization, Keep It Green, Colonial House, White Deer Run, Promises, Not One More, York, more, Not One More York, The Raise Project in Gaudenzia, York Opioid Collaborative, and York Adams Drug and Alcohol and a bunch of dedicated people volunteering their time to support and advocate for those in recovery. 
Uh, so Friday night, this Friday, we'll be doing a virtual uh, reading of the pro not, yeah reading of the proclamation. We're going to have Jennifer Smith, the secretary of DDAP, um, Department of Drug and Alcohol in Pennsylvania, and um, then we're going to follow it up with a series a speaker series. Do you want to elaborate sure. on that? Um, I think oftentimes we, when we talk about addiction, uh, we end up focusing on the number of overdoses and kind of the um, negative side. Um, there is a positive side. There are a number of people that do recover, and that really is the focus of our efforts. So what we'll be doing on Tuesday nights in September from 7 to 8 virtually is hosting a speaker series so that folks in long-term recovery can share their stories. Um, they'll be introduced and there'll be a Q&A session. It's just an opportunity to, again, point out to folks who may be struggling that, um, as one of my friends said, miracles do happen and recovery does happen. So that is the, the goal of our initiatives is really to illustrate that to the folks that may need to hear it the most. If and the public wanted to find out more about your virtual events, where would they go to find that information? We actually have... Um, a Facebook page, um, and then all of the partner organizations <coughs> will be sharing that information as well. I know not one more York. Uh, we are very active in social media and Facebook, and so we'll be kind of duplicating and sharing the event information as well. Um, any of the partners that Julie mentioned will have that information posted. So we look forward to welcoming you, and thank you, yes. all of you, for the proclamation. Great. You're welcome. Okay, so we'll move on to item number five. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda items A through E as listed below. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Three none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number six. I make a motion to approve a contract agreement and a HIPAA business associate agreement between the County of York on behalf of the Area Agency on Aging Department and right at home of Southern Pennsylvania, York, Pennsylvania, to provide in-home care services. Good News Consulting, Inc. of York, Pennsylvania, to provide guardianship services, and VRI of Franklin, Ohio, to provide lifeline installation and monitoring services for a total cost of $72,463.80 for the period of July 1st, 2020 to June 30, 2021. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven. I make a motion to approve a contract agreement between the County of York on behalf of Voter Registration Election Department and Single Source, Single Point Sourcing, LLC, Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, to provide printing and mailing services for the 2020 general election at the following rates and there is listed in the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? Maybe just discussion about what we're doing here for the general election. Sure. I think uh, most of the community is aware um, with the implementation of the no excuse mail in ballots uh, coupled with the COVID pandemic, certainly um, how people are voting and how they're able to vote is, is changing. So some lessons learned from the primary. Uh, the Board of Commissioners, um, you know, did a debrief on how we can improve the process as we move into the general election, anticipating um, more mail-in ballots. Um, as part of that process, uh, we are going to outsource the um, collating and the mailing of the ballots um, to help expedite the process, at least on our end, of getting the mail-in ballots out to the community. Um, once they go to the Postal Service, we'll put it in their capable hands, but the Board of Commissioners uh, do recognize that we could improve the efficiency in getting them out from our facility. So um, this motion is to address um, working with single source who had already done the printing of the ballots. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the anticipation is 110,000. That's, that's correct. We are, the county is planning for an excess of 100,000 mail-in ballots. And I think we have election task force that we all sit on and we think this is a cost effective measure that we move forward with this outsourcing and we've talked to other counties that have done it uh, in the primary election and it worked out well for them yeah so for example uh, our sister county kind of towards the north dolphin county um, does outsource um, this part of the process so okay any further discussion <coughs> hearing none all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed 
Motion carries. Item number eight. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve a contract agreement between the County of York on behalf of the Parks and Recreation Department and Gavin Communications, LLC, York, Pennsylvania, to create a donation page and a membership page to support the York County pa Department of Parks and Recreation for a total cost of $2,160. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine. I make a motion to award two construction contracts for the 2019 Bridge Maintenance Program to the lowest bidder, Fares, Ferret, General Construction Services, LLC, and the contracts are as listed in the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? John, do you want to tell us what these contracts are? Maybe identify the bridges. <clears throat> Sure. Good morning. Morning. As, as normal, uh, we've lumped projects together under a general maintenance. Uh, so in this case, uh, contract one is bridge 228, which is on Kennedy Road in Lower Chancellor Township, and bridge 235, which is on Cabin Hollow Road in Franklin Township. And contract two was uh, bridge 160 160A, which is in on Lake Road in Paradise and Warrington uh, townships. I would point out that we did have very competitive bidding on this project. Uh, I think we had nine bids, which is spectacular, and they were very competitive bids. So uh, we feel comfortable. Uh, this contractor is out of Halifax, Pennsylvania, but we've worked with them before, so uh, we have no problem recommending them. Okay. Great. Thank you. And I'll stay up for the next motion. <clears throat> All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10. I make a motion to approve revised engineering services in the amount of $6,000 and a 12-month contract time extension with C.S. Davidson, Inc. to include additional services for right away negotiations for the removal of bridge, county bridges 160 and 160A on Lake Road in Paradise in Washington Townships and authorize the signature of the President Commissioner. Second. I have a motion and a second. This is the project you just approved the construction bids on, and uh, no one asked why we're doing the 2019 bridge maintenance program in 2020. <clears throat> it's because the bridges, uh, the work associated with the bridges involved permits and easements. So this motion is about both of those. On the easements, uh, that was not within our scope of work, but we worked directly with Barry Myers, uh, your director of public works, to help him acquire those easements. So that's what the additional cost is. And then the time extension is because the delay from the permits and the easements caused us into 2020. So we do expect this project to wrap up by the end of this year. And I've never seen the bridges listed 160 and 160A. Is that just a <clears throat> They're back to back. Back to back, okay. Right. Similar to the one we did the ribbon cutting on where you have basically two bridges or two types of bridges, uh, this is similar. Yep. Okay basically back-to-back -back bridges. Any further questions for John? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 11. <clears throat> Make a motion to approve a contract agreement between the County of York on behalf of the Human Services Department and Bell Socialization Services, Inc., York, Pennsylvania, for the provision of services within the following cost centers, and there is listed in the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second, and I know we're joined today by Michelle Havis, who is the Director of Human Services. I believe she's going to just share an update on these. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so the motion that you have before you today incorporates our standard allocation for our homeless assistance program and some of our human services development fund dollars, but it also incorporates some additional funding that we have received from the state under the CARES Act. So the state has elected to give back to counties additional um, dollars that they can use to prevent homelessness in our community. So we have received an additional allocation of $474,000 uh, to use locally to help individuals that that are homeless or near homeless. Most of those dollars have been allocated to Bell Socialization. Um, the community can access those programs uh, through Bell's Next Door program. Um, but we're very fortunate to get these additional dollars. They're not incorporated in your county dollars for the CARES Act. They are really additional dollars that the state is sending through the Homeless Assistance Program. 
Uh, I would just take the opportunity to also mention that um, in the community right now, we do have a fair number of dollars that are available for eviction prevention and uh, to prevent homelessness. So if anybody is really struggling with that, um, a lot of these dollars are very time limited. So the time to act is now. Uh, we do have Community Progress Council that is managing a number of dollars that are available to individuals that have experienced a reduction in their income due to COVID. COVID, and then these dollars that are available through the Homeless Assistance Program that are managed by Bell Socialization. If the community takes no other takeaway but thinks they have a need, the easiest thing they can do is remember 211. You can dial it on your telephone to access information and referral. You can um, dial, text 898-211. In the box, you would put your uh, zip code and someone will get back to you to assist you. You can also um, uh, uh, dial or, or uh, locate on the web pa211.org and that will provide those similar uh, resources so that you don't have to navigate which program or which organization is best for me. But no, we are very fortunate that we have additional CARES dollars, not part of your dollars, but coming down through the state to support individuals with um, potential homeless situations. So <clears throat> phone 211, hmm? text 898-211, mm -hmm. or PA211.org. Correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? No. I mean, we were on a call this week, the commissioners and Michelle with somebody, Kelly, talked about the homeless and Jessica, and I know it's a problem, and they identified that we do have funding available now, but there always are great needs for right. homeless shelters and housing for people in emergency situations. Right, a number of those, uh, most of the CARES dollars, you know, are expiring at the end of the year. So as I said, some of them will expire in September applications, but these uh, with Bell will expire at the end of the year. So it is important for people to act now. Great, all right, thanks, Good. Michelle. Mm -hmm. um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, item number 12. I make a motion to approve an agreement between the County of York on behalf of the Facilities Management Department and Simpson, Grumbert, and Hager, Inc., Washington, D.C., for the water testing of the center dome at the York County Administrative Center and the development of a plan to address issues discovered at a cost not to exceed $29,500. Second. I have a motion and a second. I know Scott is downstairs, but we had talked about this before, <coughs> the dome here on this beautiful building had some leak problems and we're having it looked at and it's certainly something we need to take care of because we put a lot of money into renovating this building and light the dome and uh, it's a nice asset here for your county. Great. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'm number 13. I'll make a motion to approve the submission of the 2019-2020 expense and data report for the state food purchase program to the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, reflecting the expenditure of $545,572.39 in funds to purchase 1,334,606 pounds of food for households in need in your county. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 14. I make a motion to approve a purchase between the County of York on behalf of the Information and Technology Services and CDWG Chicago, Illinois, for 100 Dell laptops and a three-year warranty and 135 docks for a total cost of $115,375. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 15. Motion to approve a purchase between the County of York on behalf of the Information and Technology Services Department, Global Data Consultants, LLC, Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, for 20 Dell desktops, 7 Dell laptops, 2 Dell workstations and accessories for a total cost $37,777.12. A second a motion. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Motion carries. I have number 16. Motion to approve the forgiveness of county taxes on the following parcels for the years and amounts as indicated below contingent upon the transfer of the property to Hallam Borough. I'll second the motion. Motion and a second. I know I've been here for a number of years and this has come before us before where uh, property is being transferred over to a local municipality and we talked to our administrator, and this is not precedence any. We've done this before for Helm Township, and I think this is a good move. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 17. Motion to ratify and approve the submission of the 2021-2022 Children, Youth, and Families Needs-Based Plan and Budget on behalf of the York County Office of Children, Youth, and Families to the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services, Office of Children, Youth, and Families, Harrisburg, PA, in the amount of $62,995,788 for the period of July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. And I know this is a big number, and I think we get this every year, and I don't know if Michelle like to comment on this or not. I know Evelyn sent us a, an email kind of explaining <coughs> this number and how we get through this process every year. Sure. Uh, this is a required uh, process through the state, and part of what um, we do is look at the how or the uh, needs, uh, employee staffing needs that we will be projecting through the next year along with any program requirements that the state is requiring. We are looking to make some changes. There are some federal changes that are happening that require us to do some of our programming a little bit bit different in the upcoming year. So we're taking all of that into account, projecting what the budget is, and um, again, that's what you're receiving today. Thank you. Additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 18. Motion to approve a purchase between the County of York on behalf of the Department of Emergency Services and B. Moyer Radio, Palmyra, Pennsylvania, for two Harris mobile radios for a total cost of $19,808.20 under a PA, excuse me, PA CoStars contract. A second motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 19. Motion to approve a purchase between the County of York on behalf of the Facilities Management Department and Lobar Associates, Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, to replace the carpet in the Clerk of Court's office at a cost not to exceed $73,742.20 through the Keystone Purchasing Network Program. I'll second <coughs> motion. A motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 20. Motion to approve a tax refund register 2020-12 authorizing payment of your county real estate tax refunds totaling 34, excuse me, $35,281.19. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 21. Motion to approve a tax refund register 2020-13, authorizing payment of York County real estate tax refunds totaling $10.61. A second motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'm number 22. Motion to approve the check register for the week of August 26, 2020, totaling four million two hundred thirty-three thousand one hundred fifty-eight dollars sixty-three cents. A second motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 23. Motion to approve the check register for the week of September 2nd, 2020, totaling $3,614,160.46. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 24. <coughs> there were no executives between our no executive sessions between our last two meetings. So we'll move on to other business. We do have um, quite a few things here today underneath other business. Um, first, I think we'll start with I think 
on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, some very exciting news. I think the community is aware uh, the Board of Commissioners has taken a phased approach to rolling out um, our CARES funding um, dollars that we received uh, from the federal government via the, via the state. Um, a few weeks ago, the Board of Commissioners made some direct allocations to some nonprofits. As part of that process, um, the organizations had to submit very specific information back to us, um, showing they met the DCED guidelines um, for receiving the money. And we have our first official check to give out today on behalf of the Board of Commissioners. So I'm just going to ask real quickly if we can have Melinda Fritz come up. <coughs> Melinda Fritz is the Executive Director for the Grady York Dance Center for Dance Education. And also joining her today is Kelly Gibson, who is the President of the Culture Alliance. So um, we are really excited to give them the check today. We're going to hand them the check and then they're going to stay later for a photo where we can properly social distance. But we wanted to publicly um, give out the first check. So, I don't know if you guys want to. So, you want to just yeah. <laughs> Linda, I don't know if you want to share a few comments. Not to put you on the spot. On behalf of Great York Dance, we just want to um, say thank you. Uh, we really appreciate, I know, all the arts and culture, cultural organizations as well as the tourism really do appreciate these direct grants. Um, I want to personally thank um, Kelly Gibson and the Cultural Alliance for all the years of guidance and um, her standing up and advocating for all of us. We really appreciate it, and as we all know, we're trying to get through this pandemic together, so thank you so much. You're quite welcome. You. All right, um, David Gonzalez is joining us today from the uh, York County Economic Alliance just to give an update on the Yoko Restart Grant Fund, which opened last Friday and will continue to be open through 11.59 p.m. on September 11th. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, yeah, real quick with the Yoko Strong Restart Fund, we're here to give a quick update and reminders for the program in its entirety. Um, so it opened last week and it will close September 11th at 1159 p.m. The application is available only online. And as a reminder, uh, this grant is a, not a loan, it's a grant, to, so it does not have to be repaid back. Um, thank you for the commissioners for allocating $10 million to small businesses and $4 million to nonprofits uh, that were impacted by COVID-19. The program is not first comes, first served. Um, we encourage all interested applicants, businesses, nonprofits to review the application guide available on yokostrong.org. Uh, there are certain priorities for this program to support industries that were impacted that are not able uh, to um, secure resources through other relief efforts. Uh, those, are those are sectors in the restaurant industry, business services, retail, and personal service sectors. On the OkoStrong.org website, there is also a series of previously recorded webinars to help businesses and nonprofits work through the application in itself, um, understand the criteria, and those, program and those webinars are actually available in Spanish and English. We hosted eight webinars with over 120 attendees during our initial outreach. Uh, YCA and the Community First Fund uh, can troubleshoot questions from, from applicants in English and Spanish. Um, you can call 717-718-7845. Um, there's also an 1800 number um, for application related questions, login challenges, and uh, for any other technical assistance, you may also call 888-585-7361. Uh, to help applicants uh, upload any documents um, and to reach businesses where they are, we're hosting mobile office hours all throughout the county. Uh, today our team is in Dillsburg and in Dallas Town, and we'll be hosting other efforts in Springettesbury, Dover, York City, and many more. Um, over the past couple of weeks, the YCA will support the assistance of several community partners. We've hosted a dozen uh, small, business, small business walks where we've hosted businesses, uh, visits in communities from Dillsburg to Delta. Um, and uh, thank you to the commissioners and elected officials all throughout the county and uh, some partners from municipal offices to help with these efforts to communicate uh, this grant program to businesses. We've also offered that in English and Spanish as well. Uh, through this series of business, business walks, we visit about 150 businesses. And uh, Yoko Strong, as a reminder, yokostrong.org is your destination to view all of these resources. And uh, again, the application deadline 
deadline is September 11th. Please contact us if any questions, if you have any questions. Could you just repeat the two phone numbers? Yeah, of course. Uh, the phone number uh, directed to the YCEA is 717-718-7845. And the 1800 number for any uh, login challenges or other technical assistance is 888-585-7361. Great, thanks. Absolutely. And just to echo what David said, this is not first come, first serve, so do not panic. Take your time. Absolutely. Um, and you have till 11.59 p.m. on yes. September 14th. So. Great. Thank you. Anything else? That's everything. Okay, great. Um, I did see Dr. Howie um, had to leave, so I, I'll share a few comments. Um, as most of you know, the Board of Commissioners approved uh, funding for a feasibility study for a countywide health department. I just wanted to give an update on behalf of Jenny Engler from Family First, who was not able to be with us today. Um, so just as a reminder, um, while both public health practitioners and healthcare providers care deeply about the health of the community, Public health entities are designed to focus on the health of a community or a group of people, while healthcare providers are designed to focus on the health of individuals within a community. Healthy York, working with a representative group of community members and organizations, is leading an effort to study and develop recommendations as part of the feasibility study for a countywide health department. Just want to remind everyone, um, last week the Board of Commissioners approved an agreement with Health Management's Associates um, to conduct the feasibility study. So this group of individuals with Healthy York will be partnering with them on working on the feasibility um, study. HMA has a long track record of doing these types of activities and supporting the healthcare industry and community strategies. Um, the timeline um, for the feasibility study back to the Board of Commissioners is at the end of November. So we're hopeful that maybe we'll get it sooner, but just wanted to ground the public and set expectations on the timeline for that. So I'm sure we'll hear more from Jenny um, in the upcoming months, but we do want to keep the community apprised of where we stand with that feasibility study. And then on the, along those lines, um, some positive news to share with the community. I think everyone is aware that we look at the positivity rate um, from week to week, and I'm happy to share that the past week we did a good job of bringing the positivity rate down. We were at 5.6%, now we're down to 5% as compared to the previous seven days. So great job by everybody out there in the community. Um, continue to wear your mask social distance um, and observe the uh, current CDC guidelines. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, just update everyone, we touched upon it a little bit earlier in the one motion uh, regarding the ballots for the election. The Board of Commissioners wants to continue to keep the public updated. We know there's a lot of attention on this election, um, and we do, as Commissioner Smith said, we are planning for in excess of 100,000 mail-in ballots. So to date, um, the Board of Elections at York County, um, we have processed 29,000 online registrations. We still have roughly 5,500 that, that are in the process of being processed. We wanna share with everyone, when we talk about registrations, that doesn't just mean new voters. That could be a registration change due to somebody's name changing or an address cha changing or a party changing. But um, so between the two of them, in excess of 30,000 requests for some sort of change to um, an individual's registration. To date, um, from the primary election, for folks that requested a mail-in ballot, there was a box on the mail-in ballot that you could check to have a permanent mail-in ballot. We have roughly 36,000 individuals out there that requested that. Um, so those folks who have requested that, that's already in the system. We have online um, requests for close to 20,000 additional mail-in and or absentee ballots. We've also to date received in excess of 12,000 requests for mail-in ballots via the mail. So that puts us somewhere around 65,000 requests already for mail-in ballots. And as we said earlier, we are planning um, for that to exceed somewhere around 100 to 110,000 um, ballots. We also want to share with the community that the, 
the county will not be sending out any mail-in ballots until the ballot is certified by the state. So for those that aren't aware in general, the state certifies the ballot 50 days prior to the date of the election. So we're expecting that certification to come through sometime between Friday, September 11th and Monday, September 14th. But we just wanna again share with the public that we will not be sending any ballots out in the mail until the Board of Commissioners has a certified ballot from the state. So we'll continue to keep you um, in the loop on that. Um, if you do have a desire to request a mail-in ballot, we would encourage you uh, to do that sooner rather than later. So with that, unless the other two commissioners have any other business, uh, we'll wish everyone a happy Labor Day, and we will conclude this meeting and move on to the Public salary board. Public comment, Joel. Oh, 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 thank you. <coughs> Just period of public comment. I was remiss. Thank you to my fellow peers uh, for <laughs> reminding me. And looks like we do have somebody out there for public comment. If you could please come to the podium, state your name, um, the township with you reside in, and our solicitor will time your remarks. You have a maximum of five minutes to share your comments. Just to remind the public that the Board of Commissioners will not deliberate. This is a forum for the public to make comment. My name is Joan Lanker, and I'm from Lower Allen Township, and I'm um, coming on behalf of the Friends of Schieffer Road Bridge. Um, thank you for this time to update you on some of the activities, um, despite COVID, uh, regarding the Sheepford Road Bridge. We have prepared a proposal, a proposal here, um, and we look forward to the public meeting that we're going to, that is scheduled for September the 15th. So we do have this in hand and ready for you um, to be distributed prior to. We've been working with uh, Heather uh, Bittner and the intent is to send it electronically. She will disperse the copies a week before so you have an opportunity to see our proposal and respond to that once we meet on the 15th. Both York and Cumberland counties have similar goals and plans and agreements that include shared conservation, preservation, and cultural resources based on the reports uh, that we've uncovered over the number of months that we've been working on this. Um, much of the surrounding area on the Schieffer Road Bridge is agricultural and natural recreation, which has roads that are less traveled. The York County Heritage Program that doing a lot of homework for this, um, the York County Heritage Program highlights the special places and heritage tourism attractions that make York County unique. York County also has a website exploring York County's heritage that identifies heritage re resources to assist in planning tourism visits. There is also a brochure available to search out these sites. Our proposal suggest incorporating the historic bridges of the Yellow Breaches into the York County destination attractions. Our group is still actively expressing that this is a loved historic destination bridge connecting residents and businesses. It is not just another old bridge. It connects us to both counties and serves as a critical <coughs> secondary transportation infrastructure. Part of our discussion uh, I'm sorry, part of your decision to maintain ownership and restoration is funding. We believe there are many funding roads to follow to secure the historic restoration. One of our concepts in our proposal is the 100-1000 approach, which we will be addressing when we meet. There is funding, but it must first start with your decision to say yes to maintain ownership and restore the heritage bridges. I will be giving you a copy of this. Um, I recommend you visit the website phoenixvillefoundry.org for the Skullkill River Heritage Center. It is the restored foundry of the historic Phoenix columns used in the Sheepford Road Bridge. Did you know that the Reeves family in Phoenixville evolved their business from making the first iron nails to building railroads and bridges, and then to making cannons, the Griffin Cannon, uh, during the Civil War. There were still 92 of these cannons on the fields of the Gettysburg National Battlefield Park. Have you considered tourism as an economic asset 
for our iron bridge. And then there are the puzzles. We have another image for the fall. They were, they're also being sold in some of the stores, uh, one of which is the Cumberland County Historic Society in Carlisle. So our plan is to continue many activities, put the pieces together to fund and restore this heritage bridge. We thank you for allowing us to be involved throughout this process to assist in the final decision as well as the implementation plans. The funds are available. Restoration is feasible when planned to keep it. More to discuss on the 15th. Thank you. Anyone else out there with public comment? I see an additional person. Oh, yeah, I'm just put my mouth on. Okay. Good morning, uh, Janice Links, also Lower Island Township, also speaking on behalf of the Sheaford Road Bridge. Uh, I just wanted to give you an update on some of our recent activities. I was asked to present on behalf of the Sheaford Road Bridge at the Cumberland County Preservation Roundtable, which took place on August 27th. The roundtable meets every two months, uh, the last few meetings being held on Zoom. My presentation consisted of an in-depth history of the bridge, followed by a description of the formation of our group, the Friends of Sheaford Road Bridge, and our accomplishments along with the slideshow. The presentation was well received and we were particularly gratified by the comments of support from the established preservation groups who routinely attend. In addition, I was able to call into Bob Carey's AM 1000 uh, talk this past Sunday on the radio. Historic Harrisburg, one of our supporters were presenting and mentioned the Sheepford Road Bridge and the Bishop Bridge. I was able to give the public some information about the upcoming meeting on September 15th. And once again, we received excellent words of support, this time from Historic Harrisburg. They said we were rock stars in the area of preservation and have inspired many others' interests. Um, like Joan has shared with you, our new autumn themed puzzle is now available at History on High, located at 33 West High Street in Carlisle, and at Tickle My Senses, 315 Bridge Street in New Cumberland. We also deliver locally. It's for a donation of $20. So we have not been idle these past few months. We look forward to the meeting on the 15th at 6 o'clock here and across the hall to our understanding, and also available via Zoom. Um, we have spent much time preparing, and we look forward to seeing you then. If not in person, then in Zoom land. <laughs> so thank you. Um, anyone else out there for public comment? Okay, then if I could have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, we are adjourned. Um, everyone have a happy Labor Day, and we will now move on to <coughs> salary board. So if we can move on to salary board. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the positions, salaries, hours of work, and fringe benefits as provided by existing collective bargaining agreements or as set forth in the York County Employee Handbook or York County Policy Manual for the following departments and row offices with no additional benefits or concessions Thus otherwise noted, as stated in the internal salary board detail, Department 6, HSC Maintenance, Department 17, Information Services, Department 23, Conservation District, Department 25, Human Services, Department 28, MHIDD, Department 32, Adult Probation, Department 69, Divorce Masters, Department 70, Emergency 911, Department 71, Emergency Management Agency, Department 72, Veterans Affairs and Row Offices, Department 51, the Sheriff, and Department 53, the Pathonitary. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I, I make a motion. a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned and we will move on to the Depository Board. Item number two. I would move to retain the following ticket accounts with requirements and all checks. Okay. 
with the requirement that all checks, drafts, or orders drawn against the foregoing accounts must be signed by the commissioners, the controller, and the treasurer. And the accounts are the County of York uh, General Obligation Bond Series 2020, the County of York 2020 General Obligation Bonds Taxable, and the COVID-19 Block Grant account. I'll second the motion. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, just one question, Bob. When we put this in Plagueit, is it optional where we place these funds or they give us the best deals for as interest in things? Uh, yes, these are, um, well, the, the bond funds have to go uh, for the non-taxable portion of the bond, have to go into uh, their special arm accounts, which uh, then they will calculate the arbitrage on that. And so that's why we separated those. And yes, these are the best deals that we have available now. Okay, good. Any further questions, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Any other business? I move we adjourn. Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. And last up on the docket for today is a uh, call to order of the York County Retirement Board. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting held on August 19, 2020 as submitted. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I believe we have a guest today who will be brief. Um, <laughs> Lee Martin, who's the managing director of Market <laughs> Associates. <laughs> yep. Oh, great. Rebecca. So for anyone that's still watching, um, last time uh, when Lee was here, um, while well, the commissioners had um, some visual aids, we've asked Lee to bring something that the public could Thank use. You, so um, we're loading that uh, right now. Thank you. maximum on there. Not unless you have a Adobe. Make that bigger. I, I can zoom parts of it. There you go. Um, so anyway, you'll be pleased to know uh, oh, come on. that you'll see the report is a lot briefer this time. Um, that's not to say you don't get the full report as well. That goes to the investment committee, and I, I think Mark then puts that up on the intranet for you. So anybody who wants to do a deeper dive, that they can do that. Um, I'll, I'll just keep dragging like this. We'll work our way through it. <laughs> So you say brief, 15, 20 minutes to get through three funds? Sure. Okay. All right, I can maybe do a little quicker for you if we just stay on the uh, observations. But, you know, it'd probably behoove me to take a few minutes to talk about the markets because obviously it's been a strange year. <laughs> and who would have thought, um, you know, not three months ago I'd be here, uh, you know, first day in September and say, for some reason, we've got 20 more million dollars in your pension fund today. <laughs> we had at the beginning of the year. I never would have thought that, you know, three or four months ago. It's just, just been an amazing rebound. Um, but as you see at the top of, top of that first um, page there, you know, it was no shock in light of the economy being closed, you know, for most of the second quarter that GDP 
you know, plunged. And he did plunge about 33%. And so like me, you might all be scratching your heads, say, yeah, how can we be back at record valuations today? And it's really come down to four, four things. Um, you know, primarily, it's obviously the trillions that the Fed have thrown at this. Um, that are not, and backstopping even credit markets. So that, that has been the, the, the biggest kind of stimulus to, to market returns. Also now, as you even see on your 457 plans, most individuals out there invest in target date funds now. And you'll see on yours, about 75% of the employees are in target date funds. And uh, those rebalance every month. So if you think about it, we had the bottom of the market at the end of March. Well, not five days afterwards, all these funds rebalance, they're buying equities. And again, that supports equity prices going up. And then, you know, what? one of the other big ones is fixed income yields are at record lows. You can't get any return from fixed income. So again, that's supporting more money flowing into risk assets. So that's why, you know, as we sit here today, the market is rebounded back to where it was in about four months. The financial crisis 10 years ago, it took over three years to get back to where we were. This was four months. Um, it, it, it's, it's been an amazing to see. Uh, but as you know, markets are really betting on the future, and they're just betting on the fact that the vaccine will be approved here before the end of the year, will be out at least to frontline workers early next year, and then eventually to the rest of us, you know, prior, you know, late spring, early summer. And only then will the, eventually that the, um, the economy will fully open up and then we'll get fully uh, driving back the GDP. And what I mean by fully, there's still that 15 to 20% of the market that's not op the, of the economy that's not opened up yet. And that's really down more to like business travel, hotel stays, entertainment, all that kind of stuff. And it's not until I think post COVID that you're gonna see that eventually open up. Um, we'll take you forward four pages here. Might take a little while on this one. <laughs> Maybe that arrow there. Oh, no. Page. So if we look at asset performance, you know, what, what did it mean? There we go. So no shock, whenever you've got a stimulated market, risk on market, equities lead the way. And you can see US stocks are up 22%, outperforming international stocks and and that was even in light of a depreciating dollar, which is, tends to be a headwind for, for US stocks. Um, so great returns, um, you know, we saw through the end of June there. In a fixed income, if you look at the middle of that page there, you know, normally when it's a risk on and stocks do really well, fixed doesn't do as well, but core bonds are up nearly 3%. And that was on the back of the Fed coming out, saying they're going to backstop investment grade credit markets and and so that obviously supported that and particularly the high yield and you've benefited from that this quarter as we added into the high yield for you the high yield no shock was up about 10 percent um you know even the fed come out and said they would backstop the high yield market it's pretty amazing uh you know what what they're prepared to do so that's supported even the fixed income markets and then at the bottom of the page we look at inflation sensitive and um you know REITs did come back um, a fair amount, up 13%, but it was still about 9% behind the broad market because there are some fears in the real estate markets of ten tenant issues and that down the line, um, you know, being able to pay rents, et cetera, which could impact office. And then we've had this ongoing kind of retail issue for the last few years as well. So that's been a bit of a headwind for REITs. Um, and then... Just last couple of pages here for you. We've just got, yeah, here we go. If you look at sector returns here, it was really a quarter where um, growth sectors led the way yet again. If you look in here by growth sectors, I mean, you look at technology up 32% for the quarter, consumer discretionary up 38%. Actually, technology up 34% through the end of June for the year to date. And they've outperformed the more defensive type names, as you can see, like Staples was only up 8.7, Healthcare 16, Utilities 2. So you can, and the reason I show you that is when we look at 
some of your performance of some of your managers, obviously your low vol, higher quality managers would lag broad benchmarks in that type of risk on environment. Uh, more of your growthier names would outperform in that type of environment. Uh, but one anomaly we've really seen this year is this difference between growth and value. Through the end of August, growth has outperformed value by 40% this year. Well, I've never seen that in the 20 odd years I've been doing this. It's been an amazing run, and it's really been led by, and this is the last page on the markets for you, and the one I think you'll find the most interesting. Um, it's really been led by the five largest stocks in the S&P 500. And that is uh, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google. They're all technology now. This year, through the end of June, those five stocks were up nearly 20, have been up 25%. The other 495 stocks have been down 10%. So over a 35% difference. Um, so technology has really led, led the way. And it's why, again, any active management has really struggled to outperform which is why your indexing has done so well for you in the large cap space. Um, you know, if you wanted to outperform the index, those five names equate to about a quarter of the S&P 500 now. You would have to overweight those five names to really outperform in that environment. And of course, it's not prudent for institutional funds, particularly unfunded pension funds, to take such a bet in, in just five names, technology names. And one last concern just to show you on that. I think if we come down here. Sorry, this is slowing me down a little bit. There we go. Just this chart, this black chart here is, is a good one to look at. This is the NASDAQ 100. Think of this as large cap growth technology. Okay. If you look on the right here, the, the right hand side there, where we are today, the relative valuation of these tech stocks relative to everything else in the market is higher than when it was when we had the tech bubble burst at the end of the 90s. And we started to see some, a lot of volatility there in the last couple, couple of weeks. And even today, NASDAQ's down, everything else is up, uh, at least when I came in here. Um, so it's a concern. We still, at some point, you will get some reversion and get a sell-off sell there. So it still behooves you to stay a little bit more, keep the powder dry for an unfunded pension fund, not fully be at market weights on those, particularly when they're at record valuations. So, any question on the markets before we get into your performance? Flip this down a little bit more. Okay, here we go. So, observations page, if you've got a tab, uh, tab two, you can see you finished the quarter, you were up to about 425 uh, million. As we sit here today, uh, you've added nearly 30 million since then over the summer, and you're uh, over 450 50 million. So you've gained about 20 million this year. I think it's probably the largest. I mean, Bob, you're the probably largest the fund has ever been over 400. Yeah. So uh, even <laughs> even with this recession this year, we're at record highs. Um, for the quarter, you gained about 50 million. You returned about 12.6. Uh, did lag your bench a little because you are a little bit more defensive-minded, so pretty much in line with expectation. But again, you were still above the median public fund out there in for the quarter. Uh, some of the headwinds for the quarter. Um, if I just go, oh, why does it keep going back there? Um, you can see. Underweight equities beginning of the quarter. As I said earlier, the market bottom came five days prior to the end of the first quarter. And at that point, economists and everybody out there were still feeling there could be some third way to go. So nobody came all the way back into equities at that point from an institutional point of view. Uh, what we did do for the plan, though, was dollar cost average back in. If you remember on your weekly sheets, you see that 50 basis points a week. So in about three or four weeks at the end of the quarter, you were back to targets. We just thought that was more prudent in case you had another sell-off. So it's still far better than waiting for that next meeting, end of May, to rebalance. You would have missed all the rebound then, so you did participate in that. But that was a bit of a headwind, and then so was your low volatility type managers, um, such as Twin and Acadian, your defensive managers. What was positive, though, was your international equities, your timber farmland posted some good returns, and, um, and fixed income, particularly the high yield that was put in the fixed income. The spreads blew out. 
We added some high yield to your fund, and now spreads have narrowed, uh, and we'll probably take that off over the next quarter. Uh, but that was very much accretive to performance, as you're going to see in a minute. Longer term, as you can see there, uh, over your sim rate of return, around about 7.5% a year, gained about 170 million, uh, ranked about, around about the top quartile. But more importantly, over the past few years, as you've de risked your fund a little bit from a liability point of view of a sim rate of return, and so we've done that with the assets too. So now you're doing it with much lower volatility and downside capture. And that's important when you have to sell assets to make benefit payments. Uh, which you'll see on that second page there, you do have money going out of your fund nowadays. Uh, we talked about some of the things we did, such as adding high yield, etc. Uh, we did also do one other thing, which was stop the additional real estate payment going to Clarion, and then we cut off any dividend reinvestments in real estate, noting that real estate was going to be written down over the next couple of quarters, a little, you know, market values. Um, and so... That was obviously accretive to performance relative to bench for you, for you too. And then the other good thing we're seeing now is with all the changes you're making you, and de-risking, you have been reducing your fees. You're down to 31 basis points. And with the recent changes this summer, that, you may even drop below 30 here by the end Make of this next quarter. And, and um, you know, looking forward, because we're at record highs and very low yields, where we get return from is going to be very difficult. So focusing on really controlling fees is very, very important. So, um, and then just quickly on the looking ahead, oh, it's done it again. I'm obviously not tech savvy. You're doing just fine. <laughs> uh, oops, just got to go up one, just on the looking ahead. Um, there is a, a memo at the back that shows some of the changes that we've done with the portfolio this summer. Um, that was sent to you as well, I believe, uh, but, but feel free to read that. Basically lowering the, the active management on the domestic equity side and increasing it on the global side where you've had more opportunity to add some value. Um, Timber and Infra, you are getting calls for both of those on October 1st. Couldn't be happier. Time from a timing point of view, with us being back at record highs on equities, just to take a bit more of that risk off again. Uh, that, that will help, again, to diversify your fund here going forward, particularly as we go into a, probably a volatile period around election and post-election as well. And then for the next meeting with the investment committee, we, we're going to relook with changes on the liability side, going to relook at what the asset allocation should be noting where we are now in the markets, what that should be looking forward, and so we can maybe roll out something for, for the board to discuss in the fourth quarter to kick in in the first quarter of next year. So, because you want me to brief, I won't go through any of the other pages. Uh, I basically covered it in the observations. The back pages just support, you know, all that data. So, so any questions on the pension? If not, we can hit the <clears> Just what, what percentage open. are we funded at now? Where are we at, 90%? You've got to wait for the actuarial report, which, okay. which I think you... Boomer Shine's going to... They're working on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, Somewhere in the 90s. You, you were above where you were, because remember, this is that'll be a snapshot of 1-1-20. One, one, um, and last year, remember, you were up nearly 20%. So you had a lot of gains last year. So your funded level will be will be high. So you, you, you're well funded at the moment. Yeah, so just for the public watching, the, the question was what percent are we funded and the response was we're waiting on the data from the actuarial. Yeah, the actuarial okay. calculate that for you. So any other questions on the pension? Okay, let me flick through some of these, get to the OPEB. Which one's the OPEB? So yeah, you're in tab three. Uh, again, I'm just, I will just work off the observations page for you. So here, you finished the quarter at about 30 million. Um, <clears throat> you've made another three, three million. So again, this is at the largest it's been, about 32 million right now on the OPEB. Uh, you gained three and a half million for the quarter. And you'll see here your return was a little higher than the pension because there's a bit more risk on. You have a little more equity in this fund because, as you see on page two, the ones you're looking at, you can see that brown. You have positive contributions in. So it's an investment fund. We're less worried about any sharp down periods because you're leaving it long term. Okay. Uh, and, but no shock, it is a little bit more defensively positioned within that because you do have more equities. So in a risk on environment, you will lag a little bit. 
but at 13% for a quarter, that's like 52% annualized return for the year. We don't mind if we lag a little bit and you're making that a year. Uh, that's, that's prudent. Um, similar kind of attribution, you know, uh, to performance underweight equities and the low vault being a headwind. Uh, fixed income being um, positive here again because of the high yield play that added 11% for you for the quarter in fixed income. And then here you do have defensive equity, which is as that options uh, puts and calls that they sell, basically sell insurance. And obviously in this uncertain market, premiums for that has been quite high. So that's, that's been very accretive to performance on the OPEB side for you too. Um, Longer term, you can see gained about two and a half million, averaging about 5% a year. You have restructured a little bit where you did have a long-term and short-term pull. It's now all together now we're, we're dealing with that. Because you're looking at it weekly, we're able to easily manage the monthly payments with Tom uh, in your office. So uh, that's working quite well. And you have treasuries in the fund, so we're not concerned about any downturns because as you see, when we rebalance back into equities for you in, Q, in Q2, you are, we used the gains from the treasuries. You never sold anything that went down. So that, that is the key of having treasuries in your, in your portfolio. So, so that, that is, uh, that's the OPEB fund. Oh, I've done it again. <laughs> Any questions on the OPEB as I scroll down to the 457 to finish up? Okay. So if you go to tab four. The one probably most the employees are interested in. Yeah, the full report's 115 pages, so I don't think you're wanting to go through mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially doing this. <laughs> from jumping back at the beginning every time. We'll be here till tomorrow. Um, so just finish, we'll just finish on this observations page two for you then. Um, obviously, gains in this as the markets came back up to about 23 million. Uh, in the 457 and 334 in the 401A. Um, as you can see from the participant point of view, 463 of, uh, of about um, just a little under 3,000 active uh, employees. You might say, wow, that's a low participation rate, 16%. I will say it's kind of normal for counties because you have the DB plan as well. So it's not like, you know, if you're out in corporate world and, you, and the only plan you have is a 401k, of course, you're going to try and maximize what you can, your contributions to that. What most employees do in, in the counties because of the, you know, great DB plan, they kind of max their money into that first. And then if they have the ability to do any more, then they revert. To, to 457. So that kind of participation rate around about 20% is normally what we see. Although a lot of counties are really trying to you know, educate and, 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 and get more engagement on, on this going forward. But no, this is not the year you can really do that with the COVID situation. It, it makes it difficult to hold meetings and stuff. So your um, yeah, average age is a little over 50 years. And uh, here we go. Ah, got it right at last on the last page. Uh, and uh, as I said earlier, about 75% of your employees are just in the target date funds. And to be honest, that's a, probably the best place for them. Um, because as I said earlier, five days after the end of the bottom, those target date funds rebalance right back the target again. So they captured a lot of the upside in quarter two that if they were left trying to do it themselves and might have had fears about where the, where the markets are going, they would have missed all that upside again. So, um, you know, it's probably a good, good place for them to be there. And um, of the people that are doing active, the mix is about 70-30, and that is pretty much in line of what you would expect a 50-year-old to be. So at least it seems the education they're getting is, is working at least from... Their, their overall risk objectives, because that ultimately is their number one decision, the asset allocation. That's going to drive their expected return more than anything else. So uh, we did, uh, we won't get into the performance, but of the 13 active funds, 10 of them did outperform for the quarter. So they're doing quite well for you too. And then finally, we talked about may, maybe developing a new enrollment piece that's a little bit more eye-catching, engaging for the the next generation and, um, you know, and have that kind of ready for po rollout 
post-COVID again, when you can just be active again in front of people. So, so a lot of information summed up in observations pages for you, but uh, happy to take any calls at any time on, on any of this. Any other questions yeah, for Lee? No. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, any executive sessions, Greg? No, there were no executive sessions. Um, period of public comment. You have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, we are adjourned. Thanks, everyone, for um, hanging with us today, and have a great Labor Day weekend.